So I wanted to show some of the realities of shutter speed. Um, so sh freezing motion and showing motion in your photo. Now we're in a, a, a darker classroom. We're using a little bit of light to illuminate this fan. So right now my camera is telling me to get a good exposure if I want to keep my ISO low at 100 that I need to be at a 1 over 10 shutter speed. I'm at 2.8 because that's the widest I can get my lens and 1 over 10 is as slow as I really want to go. I'm already on a tripod. So we're going to show you what it looks like to shoot with a slower shutter speed and show you how that demonstrates motion in an image. So I'm looking at the image and you can see that the fan blades, there's three of them, have now blended together to create one object. Uh, that's sort of that showing motion that I was talking about. This is the same trick or tool you want to use if you're trying to make water look smooth and silky, whether it be a waterfall or a running river. These are the kind of shutter speeds you want to play around with if you want to free something while simultaneously making other things in the picture either blurry or look like they're holding a lot of motion to them. Now we're going to do the same thing except we're going to flip it the other direction. We're going to try to freeze the fan blades and that will demonstrate how you would free somebody that would be running across the street or a car moving across the intersection and that trick you can use later on as well. So because this is a dark lit room, I'm going to do, I'm going to break my rule about ISO and I'm going to cram this thing all the way up. Um, we're going to about 16,000 ISO. Again, don't do this unless you absolutely have to because it doesn't look awesome. So we're still at 2.8 because as I, I spoke about earlier, sometimes because of low light, uh, because of uh, different difficult lighting conditions, you're going to be forced into some of the aperture values or shutter speeds even if you don't want to be in them. So just keep that in mind. So we're at 16,000 ISO, 2.8. Uh, aperture value and we're gonna go to 1 over 2500. That will should be enough to freeze these blades and make this look like a still looking fan again. So let's take a photo. Great. So I'm looking at the photo and again you have, it, we've done the opposite of showing motion. We've frozen the motion. So this fan is moving at full speed. I'm using 1 over 2500 in order to freeze the motion and make the fan look like a, a fan that's not even moving. And that's the same trick you want to use if you're trying to capture people in movement or anything else in movement for that matter. So the next thing we're going to show you is how aperture works in real life and how that affects depth of field. So we have our fan. We've moved in this bookshelf. Um, so we so you can have some context for what's in focus. What's not in focus. I'm going to work with uh, three different uh, F values or aperture values. We're going to shoot an image at uh, an image at 28. We're going to shoot an image at 11 and then we're going to shoot an image at 22. So the first image we're going to shoot at 100 ISO. I want to keep it crisp and clean um, because it's so dark in here. I'm going to have to shoot at about an eighth of a second. And we're shooting all the way open at 2.8 to start off with. So first image. So you'll see that the fan is in, it's crisp, it's sharp, it's clean, and everything behind the fan, everything behind the blades is absolutely blurry. Now let's see what we do when we jump, jump halfway uh, to our, our, our last value. We're going to go from 2.8 to F11. Now the downside, as we talk about this exposure pyramid, is as we start to shift numbers around, especially in low light conditions, luckily we have a tripod because we have to shoot slower to allow more light into the, into the camera. So leaving ISO the same at 100 and changing our uh, aperture value to F11 from 2.8, meaning the hole went from being like this to being like this, um, now we have to shoot at, let's see what our shutter speed will be about two seconds long of exposure. Don't ever try to do this by holding the camera yourself. You're going to need to put it on a sturdy tripod. This is my travel pod. Probably better to have a little bit more of a sturdy one, but this will do for, for this experiment. So we're going to shoot our image at F11. Now, again, same thing. Fan blades are crisp, sharp, good image there. If that was your friend's face, it'd be beautiful, popping off the frame. 
But you start to see in the background, we have this book called the Book of Palms. Um, you start to see a little bit more resemblance, a little bit more sharpness in the book. You can actually start to see what the title said. Now, remember, in the picture above, before at 2.8, you can, you can barely, I mean, it's fuzzy as hell. Um, and now we're, at, we're, now we're at F11. It looks, it's starting to look like I could read the whole title if I wanted to. So the next place we're going to go is we're going to go to F22. This is an aperture value that I seldom use. I definitely don't use it with people. Um, but if you need it as your tool, you can definitely use it. So let's give it a shot, see how it looks, and see if it's something that you might want to try on your own. So we're going to go up to F22. And again, this hole went from being this big at 2.8 to this big at F11 to this big at F22. So because I'm letting in even less light, I need, and I left the ISO alone, I'm going to have to uh, ratchet up the, sh or slow down the shutter speed. Um, to an even bigger number. So we went from one eighth of a second at 2.8 to two seconds at F11, and now we're at eight whole seconds uh, for F22. So check this out. It's gonna sound like the longest pause ever. Uh, so we'll only take one of these shots. Holy hell, huh? That took forever. But here's the thing. Again, the blades of the fan, the fan is all sharp. But when you look in the background at the books, you're really starting to see you know, basically a sharp image through and through. At 2.8, it's fuzzy. At F11, it's starting to get really clear. Like I'm starting to see some things. In F22, I know exactly what the title of the book is down to the author and the publisher. So these are, this is a, a realistic view of how you can use Aperture to sort of control the sharpness in your photo, to control the depth of field in your photo, and to really start making creative decisions on how you want to capture uh, whether your subject, whether it be a person or some sort of scene that you're shooting. So the last thing I want to show on the camera in this classroom is how ISO can affect your image quality. So we're going to start off, and remember this thing is a triangle, right? So every time I move something, I've got to shift. So right now I'm going to, I'm going to shoot at a 5.6 aperture value. It's not what I shot the other things on, but for the purpose of this, uh, I wanted to add in a little hint that if you're looking for the sharpest image on most DSLR, DSLR lenses, the sharpest point of the lens will be somewhere between five, six, and eight. And don't ask me why that is. You can Google it. But it is a good quick tip if you're out in the field and you're like, I want this to be sharp and crispy and I've got great light out. If you want it to be really sharp, five, six. You're, it's a solid start, a space to start. Um, so I'm gonna shoot at five, six. I have my ISO at 100, which is a level that I told you, if you can keep it there, you wanna keep it there. And because of the lighting situation, not the brightest room, I'm at right now half a second exposure. So I'm gonna take a snap, show you what that looks like at 100 ISO, and then we're gonna turn this thing all the way up uh, to something ridiculous and see how that looks as well. All right, so first picture, looking at it, everything looks nice. I mean, there's, if I zoom in here, you don't see any digital noise at all, not really. Maybe a little bit just because the shutter was open for so long, but it looks really clean, it's a nice image. But let's just say it's really dark in the room and you have no choice. You're at the, your favorite band concert or whatever and the lights are so dim that you can't do anything about it. And it's pushing you past what would be acceptable, like a 1600 ISO. We're going we're gonna to ratchet this up all the way up to 16,000, which I know it just sounds crazy. Put this on 16,000, meaning we're letting in more light, tons of light, leaving the aperture value at 5.6. Now we need to speed up the shutter because we're, letting, we're probably letting in too much light. So let's see where that, that goes. We're now at 1 over 250 shutter speed at a 5.6 aperture and we're at a 16,000 ISO. So let's get a shot and see how that looks quality wise. So you heard that, that was much quicker. Uh, we got the image and just zooming in here and you'll see this on your screen. If you look on the brick, if you look sort of anywhere in the background, anywhere there's darker colors, especially in darker color areas, you're gonna see this sort of, it's, I, I like to call it crunchy, um, but it's, a, it's this digital noise. It's, it's not monochromatic. It's, it's got like two colors to it, like a greenish, purplish, reddish tinge to it. Um, you'll see that. That's one thing we talk about um, in retouching later. We'll talk about how to clean some of that up. But in an image that's shot this 
uh, with an ISO so high, you're gonna lose almost all quality. And remember, you're not only suffering from digital noise, but the second thing you're suffering from is a lack of sharpness. The higher you push that ISO, the less sharpness will come into the camera or will, will result on the image. So be careful when you have to really push your camera. In many cases, you'll be able to get around this. So a fun fact, if you're only gonna use your picture at a small size for something like your blog or on a website and you're not gonna blow the picture up, you might be able to squeeze out a 3200 um, ISO, a 6400 ISO, and then use a little bit of retouching to sort of get rid of some of the digital noise, but you won't be able to get it bigger than that. So sometimes the web and the size of the final image is gonna be your friend, but if you can at all ever avoid going up past 1600 ISO for really good cameras, and if you can avoid going past 800 ISO or 400 ISO for cheaper, more inexpensive cameras, then I advise you do that. But needless to say, if you need to capture an image in low light, a DSLR is gonna be your best friend.